you got your notes. We're back in the book of Proverbs. <coughs> we're talking about, uh, we're in a subject, I'm just calling good advice. There's just so many verses in Proverbs, and some really don't fill a, uh, um, a category per se, where it would be a full uh, subject. Usually when we do a subject, it ends up being four or five weeks. These are just, and this one's probably going to be pretty long. There's several points I have as we go through this. But just some verses that teach good stuff, things we need to know, things that will help us. Uh, we started a couple weeks ago. We looked at number one, when we feel pressured or that we are being persuaded to do wrong, automatically reject it. Okay, that, that we have to have that mindset. Number two, we looked at last week, God's discipline in our life is a sign of God's love. And we looked at that from many, able, many, many um, different angles. And some of the verses we're looking at are what I call, you know, heavy hitters. You know what a heavy hitter is? You, you, you like baseball? Usually the guy that bats first, he's the guy that gets single, maybe a double, you know. Uh, the heavy hitters are like three, four, and five. Those are the guys that if you make a bad pitch, they'll hit the ball 7,000 miles. Okay, that's the heavy hitter, the big, t the big guy that's got muscles everywhere, a lot like me, that kind of guy, heavy hitter. So these verses, some of these verses we're looking at, they're heavy hitters. They, these are like, these are serious. Now, all the Bible is important, don't get me wrong, but these deal with some subjects that if we think it through, they're very important. And uh, this, one, this verse is a big one. Number three, <coughs> we must be diligent to guard our affections and emotions so we can make proper decisions in the most important areas of life. We must be diligent to guard our affections and emotions so we can make proper decisions in the most important areas of life. Proverbs 4, 3. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of of life. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Out of it are the issues of life. Now I want you to understand what this verse is saying. It is telling us what we are to do with our hearts. And by the way, this verse is really applicable when we think about teenagers, you know, youth director back in the day, you know, trying to get them to guard their heart. And it is very important for teenagers because um, sometimes their decision makers get broke very easily. But it's also true for adults. And, um, and so it's very important. It teaches us what to do. What? The word keep. The word keep means to, to watch, to guard from dangers, to keep closed and blockaded. Okay? That's what God says we're supposed to do with our heart. We're supposed to have, as it were, a, a, a security system. What's a security system for? A security system is there to inform you when something dangerous is present so you can do something about it, right? How many of you have a security system at your house? Okay, we have one in our house. Uh, we got one several years ago, and someone broke in two out of three Sundays while we were at church, and so it's like, okay, we're going to get a security system. And we've pretty much had one ever since. But we turn it on, we go to bed at night. If someone breaches the perimeter, you know, the, um, uh, the alarm will go off. I'll get up, turn the lights on. They'll see me get scared and flee. Okay, so that's how it works. <laughs> But uh, listen, when, when you think there's danger, you spring to action. I remember as newlyweds, we were living in a little apartment in, in Indiana, and I got home from work at about 2 in the morning. My wife was already asleep, and so I got in, I changed, I, I got in bed, and all of a sudden, I was, I was, what is it, in five minutes, I hadn't fallen asleep. The, the living room light just goes on by itself. And I'm jump, I'm sorry, somebody's in the house, and I jumped up, and I'm ready to run out there. My wife goes, oh, that dumb light is broke. It keeps turning on by itself. Okay, I thought someone... God in our house. And when someone gets in your house, what are you going to do? You're going to react. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to guard. Keep our heart with all diligence. We want to we wanna make sure there's a blockade. We have a security system. So if something is trying to, to, to get in that should not be in, we can make the right decision, take the right actions. It's also telling us how we should do this. It says with diligence. That means watching or guarding like somebody at a jailhouse. Okay, the, the, you've got all this security there, and, and, and you're very diligent to make sure nothing is getting in. It's not some haphazard thing that we do. <clears throat> and it's telling us why we are to do this. The word issues means boundaries or borders. So it's saying we're supposed to guard, protect our heart with all diligence. 
Because out of it are the boundaries of life. By the way, boundaries are not restrictive, they're protective. You see, Satan gets us messed up on this. He wants us to think that any type of boundaries we have in life are restrictions. When in fact they are not restrictions, they're protections. They're keeping us from going into an area or to a part of life that we should not go into. It's all a matter of how we look at them. By the way, Christianity today is very sloppy. You guys are just old fogies and this or that. No, we believe in boundaries because we don't want to get hurt. Maybe that's why the average youth group, and no youth group is perfect, is just a bunch of worldly garbage, and 90% of them step outside of church as soon as they graduate from high school because the world's already been in the youth group because you don't want to be an old fuddy duddy and you don't want to preach to the kids. And so they just step away and say, listen, if we're going to have the world in the church, the world does the world better than the church does the world, I'm going out to the world. Okay? Those boundaries are protective. They are helping us from getting into an area that would mess up our life. Now listen to this. Um, the boundaries in your life, all of us have boundaries. By the way, don't let anybody fool you. All of us have boundaries. Just some are a lot lower than others. If you have a boundary and your boundary is so far out that the trouble's in the gate, you're in trouble. But the, whatever boundary it is you have in your heart, it's a result of what you're allowing in your heart. That's why we guard our heart, because what we allow in our heart is going to determine how far we're going to put the boundaries in our life. Now, if you really think about that, I can tell what you're allowing to go on in your heart by the boundaries you choose to set. That's what the Bible's telling us. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of the boundaries of life. You under Somebody that, ha oh, you know, what's the big deal about that? Come on. You're allowing a lot of junk in your heart. And, you, and you're pushing the boundaries out so far, you do not have any protection in life. This whole thing, <coughs> again, <coughs> the kids was watching the, uh, the Olympics, and they, they, they interview, you know, er, by the way, everybody's an overcomer, but they, they're interviewing this, per, you know, always do the personal story, and, they're one, and this girl's telling about how her parents raised her and said, they just let me do whatever I want and figured I would learn from my mistakes. That is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. Oh, go play in the street. You'll get hit by a car, and I guarantee you won't do that again. You won't have to. Until the children get boundaries, until the children or the teenagers get boundaries, we need to help them with them. If you're the parent in the house, you set it up. You, you decide the issues. One day, you teenagers and you children, you're going to grow up and you're going to have to make those determinations by yourself. But until, until then, trust the parents. Okay? But whatever we're allowing in our heart is going to determine the boundaries that we really believe and we apply in our life. So we need to be very careful. The Bible informs us that the heart is the source for the decision and the choices of life. We set the course for the future by the direction of our heart. Everything flows from that. Whatever you're letting in, well, that's just fun, and that's just this, that's just that. No. It's going to, it's going to determine how you think life. If you're listening to non-godly principles, you're going to, th those are going to start determining how you think. They get a stronghold in your life. And now you're making bad decisions because you've let bad things in there, and that's how your thinking gets really kind of messed up. Great sinfulness comes if we allow free reign in our heart. Got to fight it. That's why we put those boundaries up. That's why you have borders. The pre-flood world proved it. God's problem with the pre-flood world was that the dark evilness in their hearts, which, which uh, they had dark evilness in their hearts, was, which was the source of their sinfulness. Okay? Look at verse, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. This is really why God destroyed the whole world and started over. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. 
he could be describing our world today. Everything is just evil. If you believe in something that is right, if you believe in something that is moral, the world looks at you like some kind of weirdo. Why? Because their, their level of morality is so low because they allow everything in the world in their hearts. And so their boundaries are non-existent. I get these emails from these, some of these places, and, and this, this one, uh, I think it's like one million moms, and they'll send me things, and, and, and they'll say, this show on television is supposed to be a children's show, and they're letting this go on, and they'll have you email the um, uh, sponsors and so forth to let them know, hey, qu quit playing that. And, and I'll, it's real simple. I just send an email like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll protest that. Uh, there's one show that's on, on it's supposed to be a, ch a children's channel. It's called Teachers. It's a story about, I, I, I've never watched it. It's a story about teachers in a school. And it's filled with nothing but innuendos, immorality, and just all kinds of, and this is something that a, a parent would look at and say, oh, that's a show about teachers. It's got to be good, right? It's a school. No, it's not good. And by the way, neither is the Disney Channel. It's about time we put a torpedo in that ship. Okay? They're putting on shows with children who are now transgendered. Boys that have boyfriends. Okay? Well, what's wrong with that? Come on, that's... I know what you've allowed in your heart. And the world's imagination is just so evil and so wrong. Listen, we need to keep a guard up in our heart. Or else we're going to start allowing that in ours. <coughs> because of the principles, it's ver vitally important that we guard what we put in our heart. <coughs> the heart is the, uh, uh, a symbol, no, it, it's a symbol of life, the source of all of our, 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 of all of our outer actions. Look at Psalm chapter 23, verse 3, in, in, in the first part of verse 4. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He, ha the, he that hath two things, clean hands and a what? Pure heart. Do you know the two go together? Yep. Clean hands come from a pure heart. A dirt, dirty hands come from an unpure heart. And so we need to be very careful. Everything in our society, it's our music, TV, news, promotes following our unregenerated heart. Jer Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? In other words, we live in this flesh, and so our heart has this natural tendency to deviate to the left, to the wrong. So once we're saved, God gives us a new heart, but we still have the old flesh. So we have to constantly, on a regular basis, rebuke our heart and make sure we're careful what we feed it. Because if we're feeding it the wrong things, it's like it likes that, right? It, it, li it likes the wrong things. Look, I can go out with my family to a restaurant, and all of them play some kind of background music. And most of the time, it's like, it's just white noise. It's, I, it's songs I don't recognize. It's songs I, I, I would have no clue. But occasionally, we'll go to a restaurant, and it's like, okay, that's good music. Not that it's good. That was the music my flesh liked. You say, man, do you hate rock music? Absolutely not. I like it. But I don't allow myself to listen to it. My flesh likes it. But the spirit likes the spiritual songs. So the spirit's got to boot the flesh out every time. Say, so that stuff is not good. I, I got to stay with the good stuff. But your flesh always has, oh, come on. It's just, be very, very careful. We've got to guard it. <coughs> we need to just be very, very careful. Now, also... Before I give you some general principles here as we're finishing this up in a few minutes, we want to be careful, but we want to understand that this principle also has a positive side. When we keep our heart right and in the things of God, we'll have the right kind of lifestyle. We'll have the right kind of uh, boundaries in our life. Okay? Uh, you, you kids, that you like to, and by the way, not every, not every rule in our school book is Scripture. Okay, it's not. Some of the rules are just because you have a group of kids and, and, and you got to keep, you got to have the rules, right? Just because it just is what we got to do. Not that it's inspired of God, okay? I don't have devotions out of the, 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 the school handbook in the morning. It's just, I'm not. 
And, and some of those things are not necessarily wrong. They're just, you know, you have to, you, you know, wearing a proper uniform is, is not wrong, okay? You know, well, it doesn't have the right um, plaid or whatever. It's not the right color. It's just, that's the rule book. <coughs> but, but a lot of those are based on, on biblical principles. A lot of the ones are. And so those of you that fight those things, it's because you're allowing your heart to determine the boundaries, you hear stuff in church, and by the way, if you're hearing something in church and it's, it's biblically principled, you don't have a right to argue with it, neither do I. Now, your flesh will argue with it. My flesh will say, what? But if the flesh, remember, the flesh doesn't get the vote. So we got to guard our hearts and say, listen, if this is what God wants, I'm going to allow this in my heart, and it's going to help me have the right guidelines, the right principles in my life. And if I'm putting good things in my heart, it's not a big deal. It's not. It's, just, it's, it's not. I trust God, and this is what God is saying, and, 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 and I'm trying to grow in my faith and read my Bible, and so I'm in. Now, based on all of this, in this verse, what are some, what can we do? Let me give you a couple thoughts here. It means that we must be vigilant about guarding what we allow to penetrate our mind and heart. We must be vigilant about guarding what we allow to penetrate our heart, mind and heart. If, if what I allow in my life, if the, if, if the determining principles of my life, the boundaries which are going to guide how I live, come from my heart, then I better be very, very, very vigilant about what I allow in my heart. Okay? Like that security system. We're going to keep it fixed. What does that mean? Question it. Now, sometimes it may not end up being a bad thing, but I'd rather, I'd rather question it up front and find out than just allow it and then say, oops, don't be so carefree. Better to start by being suspicious and then change your mind than to blindly allow and target. Have you ever know? It, look, I can think back in the last 20-something years of all the little technological things that are just now a part of our life that we use, and everything, everything has an inherent danger, and you have to be careful but not all of it's bad. But you know, you know what I notice? We always start out being suspicious just to be safe. Okay, I remember, how many remember pagers? Bzzz. Then you had to run to a phone. Okay, let me go find a, you know, I always have a quarter in my pocket. And, and I remember Pastor Esposito, you don't need, you teenagers don't need pagers, and they didn't. And he would joke around and say, you have a pager, when it goes off, it's your sister calling you every hour just so you look cool. Okay. But, but we were careful. No, was there anything wrong with the pager? No, I got a pager. I was using it for my business that I had. But, but we're careful. Email. When email first came out, all this stuff, and, and people were connecting with old flames and all that through email. That's, that's just started. <laughs> Juno. By the way, some people still use Juno. It's like, really? Okay, get into this. Is, that, the 90s called. They want Juno back, all right? But, you know, we were cautious about it. Texting. You know? And all this, now, are any of those things, no, no, no. We're just, we try to be very careful up front. Let's understand the dangers and let's have a game plan, not just blindly swallow something. But, but aside from that, we swallow things too quickly and we allow things. And then it's like, oh, later on, like, oh, yeah, that wasn't a good idea. That, that, that shows a lack of prudence. Proverbs talks a lot about prudence. Seeing something from its future consequences, potentially. And so let's be very careful. <coughs> let's not just, well, everything's cool. No, no. Well, this person said it's cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine. You know, if, if we react the opposite, we let everything in right away, and then later on it's like, well, if it's bad, I'll kick it out. You know, it already does damage. It will already do damage by the time you kick it out. Okay, let's just be very, very careful. Let's look at something, and let's have a little spiritual discernment about what we're doing in our lives. Next, be careful about the things that we see and allow to get into our heart. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. I'm, oh, no, no. My, my, I'm not. The next point, that, that's down later, later on. I skipped page here. We must not be ignorant about the evil influences that seek to penetrate our minds and hearts. We need to know what's going on around us. We must not be ignorant of the evil influences. Well, you know, I just don't know anything about that. Well, you better. Now, I'm not. Look. I'm not saying we need to study evil because you don't need to study evil. But we need to know what's going on. 
okay? You, look, uh, I mentioned Disney, and some of you are like, what, Disney's bad? I just think of Pocahontas. Oh, she, needed to, she needed to dress a little bit better, okay, and quit talking to trees. I, I'm not kidding you. There was a guy in high school, he got in a fight with a tree. Now, he was on drugs. He was sitting over there yelling at the tree, and then he took a swing. Guess what? The tree won, okay? But Pocahontas did the same thing. But, but you know, you think of, uh, 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 you know, Sleeping Beauty. Can I just tell you something? Disney is not promoting Sleeping Beauty anymore. They're promoting, they're promoting homosexuality through uh, Beauty and the Beast and all that other garbage. But it's just Beauty and the Beast. I, it's, it, yeah, it is Beast. Disney's the Beast. And, and so we don't know. Well, well you know, we don't have that option. We've got to understand these evil influences that are out there. Now, don't study them, but just know enough to say, that's something just wrong with that. Okay? You, you, you have to. You know, these parents, sometimes, some of you parents like, you know, I'm just, I don't know a lot about technology. And if you don't want to know about technology, that's fine. I do because uh, it's been a great help. But, but, you know, your kids are using it. You better know what's going on. Well, you know, Junior says it's safe. Junior lies. You can tell him I said so. No, but he's a good kid. He, right, that's right. He is a good kid. She is a good girl. But if you allow them because you're ignorant of the technology, they're going to cease to be a good boy, and they're going to cease to be a good girl. That's why we tell, you know, we don't want the kids in our school, you shouldn't, you, I think it's a rule, you can't have social media. Now, am I against that? No, I have Instagram. By the way, I've been trying to post more spiritual pictures than, you know, my kids sticking their finger in their nose, okay? But, but, but listen, they don't need it. They're, is there anything wrong with the cell phone? Nope, I have one. They don't need one. So, so it's just let's be very careful. If you have children, you cannot be ignorant. Okay, well, I don't know anything. Talk to Brother Ross. He knows everything. Okay, but just, hey, <coughs> Sometimes it's with education. We'll purposely put our kids in, in some type of organization or something that's not spiritual because we don't understand it. By the way, and, and I, don't know, I don't know of anybody in our church who has their kid in this, so if you do, I'm not calling you out. But hell would freeze over before my kid was in the Boy Scouts. And double hell would freeze over before they were in the Girl Scouts. Anybody that peddles those awful cookies deserves punishment. The Boy Scouts allow girls in now after already allowing homosexuality in. And the Girl Scouts are no better. Oh, but I, I, and I remember I was in the Boy Scouts when I was a kid for four weeks. And then we had a Christmas party with an exchange. My, wife, my, my mom gave me a gift to exchange and I kind of liked it so I quit going and kept the gift. Told her, I, got, I got my own gift, Mom, and I'm not going back. Okay? But, but, it used to be, it was, it was. They taught you how to start fires. Not, not, not that way. Okay, in, if you're out in the wilderness, right? And how to, how, to, how to help stray dogs and all that stuff. Now that's not what's going on. You know, putting our kids in unsafe sports leagues. Be very careful about that. Putting them in some unsafe group because you want them to learn this or that. Be very careful about that. They're, you know, well, they're just good there to learn. They're going to learn a lot more than that. Okay, we got we to we have some discernment. And, and I'm, I'm totally getting off base, but pray for me. Next, <coughs> um, we must have standards, principles. I think these are all blank, so I'll, I'll go slow for those of you that can't think. We must have standards, principles, guidelines, and rules in place to guard our minds and hearts. Standards, principles, guidelines, rules in place to guard our minds and hearts. Now, think with me. If I don't want this to happen, if I don't want this in my family, then I'm saying, what could cause that to happen? And you put a guideline, a principle, or, or something in place to make sure that doesn't happen. For instance, and this is, if I don't want to cheat on my wife, I'm going to be like Mike Pence who takes a lot of heat for this, but that's okay. That's because the people that give him guff for this, they allow everything in their heart, so they have no boundaries. He will not eat alone with a woman of the opposite gender. He won't, he won't be with a woman of the opposite gender unless his wife's around because he says, that's my wife and I'm going to be safe. He takes a lot of guff for that. That's common sense. 
Now, is that man, sure enough, next week it's going to come out he cheated on his wife. I don't think so, though. Is that man going to cheat on his wife? Not if he keeps those principles. Those principles are going to keep him in line. Listen, if I, if I went out to eat somewhere and I saw my wife sitting in a restaurant with another guy, oh, it's just a guy from work, we're just having a business lunch in, hell would freeze over and plates would start flying. Okay? We would have a really hard time. And by the way, if she came in and I was sitting there with another woman talking about church business, I would hope she would throw a water cup at my face. Now, she doesn't throw very hard. I'm pretty sure I could duck. But that's not going to happen. You know why? We have principles in our life. Amen. They're there to keep the bad out. Well, that's, that's legalism. When someone says that's legalism, they're telling you they're about as spiritual as a brick. Okay? And they are false. They're not false. They, they believe in Christ. But they are teaching some false stuff. Legalism is adding works to salvation. Okay, if I say, trust Christ and be baptized to go to heaven, first of all, kick me out of here, but that's false doctrine. You don't have to get baptized to go to heaven. You get baptized because you're going to heaven. Okay, but, but, <coughs> but we just, we get caught up all the nonsense. And so let's be very, very careful. We need these boundaries. Don't, don't fall. Liberal Christianity, well, you know, what's wrong with drinking? Lots. Show up in a few weeks. We'll discuss that. But there's no principles, there's no guidelines. I think I have some stuff in here. Boundaries funnel us away from that which is wrong and funnel us towards that which is right. Are you with me? So a boundary will say, you know what? Oh, I can't go there. Okay? I, I, I get hurt. And it's going to push me. There's, there's, a, there's the way you're supposed to go over here. That's what it's for. It's there to help us to do right. Um, they protect us from that which is wrong so we can participate from that which is right. It is hard to be involved in something that is right when you are allowing yourself to be in something which is wrong. Now, you can do that for a little while, but it's going to catch up for, with you. Be sure your sin will find you out. Okay? It, it's it's going to come. It, you know, you're, you're going to get caught. God's going God's to get on you there. It's, you're not going to get you. Like, no one can sin successfully. You know, Lord, help me to, help me to cheat my employer. No, that's not going to happen. Okay? If it does happen, it's Satan. It's not God. God is not in the business of helping you to be successful as a sinner. Well, he says, if I meditate on Scripture, I'll be successful in everything I do. I know. You'll meditate on Scripture. You'll have the right boundary. You're not going to steal. So, so let's be very careful about that. Lastly, and then we'll stop for tonight. These standards, principles, guidelines, and rules make the decision for us ahead of time. Understand that. All these principles, standards, rules, all stuff, they are the decision makers so that I don't make a bad decision, here we go, in the, in the, in the heat of the moment. Let's go back to the guy that's not going to cheat on his wife, so he's not going to go alone with another woman. Okay? He's sitting there, and so here's some beautiful woman that says, my car's broken down, can you give me a ride home? And it's just you and her? You, def you, you already made that decision. It's like, it just comes, no. No. Okay? Hey, why don't we go out for a business lunch? No. You don't have to say, you Jezebel, I'm married. Okay? No, you didn't say that. I'm sorry. No. Why? I decided that a long time ago. Hey, uh, here's one, and you won't like this, but it's all good. You know, letting your kids slumber at someone's house. Typically, there's not much slumber. And if you knew half the things that go on in this world, and most of them are when people are slumbering at somebody's house, you wouldn't do it either. Yeah. <coughs> That's our rule. <coughs> Uh, you know, Joe Jitsu wants, wants me to stay tonight at his house. Oh, he does? No. Sorry, we don't do that. Now, is Joe Jitsu a bad guy? Only if you meet him in a dark alley, okay? No, he's not a bad guy. But I don't want to have to make a decision on every single little thing. I would, because 95 out of, well, 99 out of 100, let's say 99 out of 100 people, they stay tonight at their house, they're not going to do anything wrong. But it's that one time. 
So for us, I'm telling you you need to do that. For us, we just decided you're not doing that. Okay? It's just a principle. So the decision is made. <coughs> and our, our rule, rule book, you know, we put things in there. We don't want to have to always, well, is this one right or this one wrong? It's like, let's just decide where we want to be careful, and let's put it into place so that it's done. Okay? And some of you are just way too free. You know, I have one rule, just, you know, uh, uh, show up. My mom, and God bless her, she just had a rule. Wherever I was, wherever I was, and this is back before cell phones, she just wanted to know where I was. I'm going to Robert's house tonight, and we're going to, I'm staying the night at Robert's. Okay, now listen, there was 3,475 other things I did before I ever got to Robert's house and went to sleep. And most of them were not good. But again, we weren't a safe family back then. So, so you, we got to have some things in place. Let's be very, very careful. The point is, where we eventually draw the line in our life is going to be determined by what we're allowing in our heart. Let's draw the line now. Let's be careful when we get in our heart so that that boundary doesn't go farther and farther and farther out to where the danger is inside of that boundary. The boundary is supposed to be protective. And by the way, there is, and I'll say this and I am done. There is nothing good outside the boundary. Satan tells you that. You, you, you children, you, you kids that grew up in a, in, in a Christian home. See, but yeah, man, what about all these people that weren't saved? And you talk about your old life. I don't talk about it good. It wasn't good. And I don't want that for my kids. Okay? I know what's on the other side of the fence, and that's why I crawled back in on this side of the fence. I didn't want, I didn't want that out there. There's no, Satan will make it look good, but it's not. Anybody that got saved and is living for God that was on the others. And by the way, sometimes we start allowing ourselves to get back over the fence. we got to be careful about that too. Let's guard our hearts. Okay? God wants to protect us. Let's pray.